good to have this time to spend with you and to greet all of you. May God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. you are engaged in holy work. I remember how Moses was, of course, reminded where he stood on holy ground. And you too, standing where you stand, the principles for which you stand, fighting the fight that you fight, stand on holy terms. And so I'm here today to encourage you. I understand that Starr has advertised that I like to speak about American principles, and I do. I've spent a lifetime teaching. I occasionally still do, though now I'm retired. And I taught nothing so often, so frequently, and so intensively than what this country means and how it came to be. Today, though, we have some primary areas of concern to think about. We have policy questions that are on the forefront of the agenda. And it is not going to do to neglect the urgencies of the day in order to recall the wonders of the past. So allow me to spend a little time musing with you. I bring no tables, no data. I bring no historical references necessarily. I only bring to you today, to your attention, to the forefront of your minds, a couple of questions. And really, only one question. And that question is this. To what do you say, amen? To what do you wish to say, amen? It does not do to choose a candidate for office where you know what the candidate will foster is something to which you must say, amen. Wow. Yes, amen. 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 You will hear often debates about who were and were not believers in the founding. It's an interesting scholarly discussion. There's much that can be said about it historically, who worshiped where, whether they believed or didn't believe. But let me tell you, my friends, the issue isn't whether Thomas Jefferson did or did not believe. The issue isn't whether George Washington was a serious Episcopalian or not. The issue is, did God intervene in this space? It's time to tell government to stand back. We don't have to wait for someone singing the pipe dream that we all belong to government, when we all know that the government belongs to us. All right. So thinking about the question of contemporary policy urgencies in light of the depth of American experience and principles, I invite you to take the place of those who originated this great nation. Yes. I'm not modest in my demands upon you. <laughs> Take their place. It's your turn. Wow. It's your turn. Wow. You can be founders, too. All right. mm. okay. It only requires to speak everywhere, loudly, with clarity, with boldness declare the coming of the day. Let them hear your tread as it approaches at the steps of the Capitol. Let them hear you marching down Pennsylvania Avenue. Let them hear the clarion call of revival. Press, press forward. Take the issues seriously. I don't want you to ignore those, though I'm speaking generally. But remember always to present them on the strength of faith and conviction, knowing the work has been appointed by God. I preached a week ago, and I'm done with this. This is what I'm closing. 
And the title of the sermon was Somebody Don't Get It. <laughs> and the burden of the message was that God speaks to us. I hear people say, I'm waiting to hear from God. <laughs> I said, well, are you nuts? God has spoken and is speaking. Yeah. You don't have to wait to hear yes. from God. God is there. God speaks. God calls. Hear. Yes. Let those who have ears hear. Yes, sir. Let those who have eyes see. Yes, sir. God isn't waiting. Why are we 